Hello again, good people. After we left Port Hedland, we trundled out to Marble Bar for two reasons. One is we hadn't been there before, and two, an old friend of Belinda's parents is looking after a gold mine and uh, a museum out there. Marble Bar is known to be the hottest place in Australia, and it did record 116 days over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is um, 38 degrees and some of those days were 49. It's also home to the iconic Ironclad Hotel, which has been rebuilt a few times and downsized and upsized and all those things over a hundred odd years. Uh, it is the place that does not sell draft beer. You buy beer in cans or other drinks and the cans are <coughs> $9 each. So it's a reasonably expensive place, so you're not going to get there um, get raging drunk, I wouldn't have thought, before your wallet runs out of money. But we had to go and have a drink. Uh, we had a couple of beers with the locals. And, uh, yeah, just one of those iconic pubs. It's well known everywhere, really, the ironclad. And uh, that was a good afternoon and evening. This was us at the Comet Gold Mine. Um, this gold mine is not functioning. That hill there is honeycombed with shafts and the problem is they think there's still quite a bit of gold in there but they can't get to it because if they start mining, the whole bloody thing will collapse. And that chimney there was once the tallest chimney in Australia. It might have even been the Southern Hemisphere. It was 75 metres high. And they built that because the rock here is impregnated with arsenic and when you heat the rock to get the ore out, gold out, of course, it releases arsenic gas and putting it up a big chimney like that disperses it. I would imagine, actually, that on a still day, the arsenic gas would just fall to the ground. <laughs> it would be somewhat dispersed, but it still wouldn't be good for your health. But anyway, it was, uh, it's interesting. Everything is still there, um, but it's all, you know, there's, there's big motors and electric motors and presses and tools and all that sort of stuff is still there, but it's uh, deteriorating uh, reasonably quickly. And off there in the distance, you can see the museum. And Jared has set that up really nicely and it's a lot of information. So if you're in that area, it's a couple of k's out of out of Marble Bar, uh, the road is bitumen out there now because there's a, an iron ore mine further west and south along that road there. Um, so there's this big triple and quadruple trailer uh, coming along there loaded with ore. That's the museum. There's rock collections, there's history uh, equipment um, there. And the entry fee, I think, is $3. Um, so it's not an expensive thing. And it's a, you know, six or seven k's out of town. So it's really worth the visit if you're in that Marble Bar area. And there's more to do in Marble Bar, more to see in Marble Bar than I would have thought possible. Um, there are some very nice gorges and stuff. I'll show you some of those in a minute. But, um, this is all the stuff in the mine. So all the equipment is still there, big presses, electric motors, conveyor belts, but it's all just corroding and rusting away. And if they decided that they were going to dig up some more gold, then uh, they would have to uh, start again, really. Also out there, there is a secret World War II airbase. You can tell it's a secret base because the sign says so. And that's out beyond the, the iron ore mine. But you could still land a small plane here, and I think people do. It's fairly hard to find uh, by road. And there's Jasper Mining near Marble Bar as well. This is a flying fox, and it pays to do your research because I was told the flying fox was used to send supplies across the river when there was floodwaters. 
but in fact it was used for putting uh, devices on to measure the depth of the floodwaters. I was also told that it was closed by 1966 and the lady that told me that was in the tourist bureau she said I moved to Marble Bar in 1966 and it was closed by then and in fact when you do the research uh, it actually opened in 1966 so <laughs> you can get a lot of misleading information and you need to do your own research as I said there's some beautiful gorges out there. This is Dulina Gorge. Um, it's in two parts. There's this gorge. That pool's bigger than it looks. You could swim in that. And this is the main river. And a few months, or six weeks before this was filmed, this river was in flood. And you can get a concept of how wide that would have been. Uh, probably a kilometre and a half wide. Uh, but at the moment, there's, there's a really nice swimming hole in between that gorge there. On a hot day, that is uh, well worth doing. This is the actual marble bar, um, Chinaman's Pool, China's Pool, um, and the person that discovered it thought these, this rock here was marble, and in fact it's quartz and jasper, not marble at all, but he was an explorer and not a geologist, um, but it, the name stuck. And this is Glen Herring. Gorge. This was a really tough walk in. This was funny actually because we walked down the right hand side of this gorge because that's where the track led us. We scrambled over rocks and through thick bush and on the way out we, we came down the left hand side. It took us an hour and a half to get in and 15 minutes to get out just walking on the sand there. <laughs> so we, we could have walked in that way and saved ourselves uh, a lot of scratches and, and effort. But anyway, it was worth it. This is an absolute stunning gorge. And then we went to Cape Corodron, which is about 160 k's north of um, Port Hedland. It's a nice spot. That's me not catching fish. Uh, and you can see the tides up here. Just keep an eye on these little trees, big groves in the, bay in the right pond there. there. Um, this is the bay on the south side. Um, and this is at high tide. So up here you get six metre tides. Just remember what those little trees look like. And this is it at low tide. You can see one of the trees down there. Uh, that's the point where I was fishing. Uh, and I'd have as much luck catching a fish there now as I did when the tide was in. But it goes right out, you can walk out here and there are crabs and octopus and sea slugs and all sorts of turtles you can see out here. Uh, it's really fascinating. And there's those trees, that's that little bay that I was showing you before. So those trees are now high and dry, a six metre tide and uh, yeah. It's really fascinating. Twice a day the tide goes out and twice a day the tide comes in. And it's a really interesting spot. But none of these spots, we camped at four of them along the coast here between Port Edland and Broome. And if you haven't got a boat or you're not interested in fishing, there's not much to hold you here. So we spent three nights here and it was probably one night too much. 
there's nothing else to do. Uh, there's no long walks or hills to climb or anything like that, but it is very nice and it's a very relaxing time. We, we had time on our hands, so that's what we did. Blue crabs, little blue crabs everywhere. Look at them all. Man. So this is Barn Hill Station, and uh, we really enjoyed this place. It was a bit better than Portsmouth for people who don't have a boat and aren't into fishing. Um, there's a few walks to do, and um, a bit better beaches and a bit better swimming than Portsmouth. Uh, this can was actually placed there by John Forrest in one of his explorations. So there's a walk up there, uh, which takes about an hour up and back and uh, so some nice beaches, some good fishing off the rocks. Uh, one of my neighbours while we were there caught a fairly large um, Spanish mackerel, um, which I was going to pose with and pretend I caught it, but even I can't stoop that low with fishing. Um, yeah, so we, we thought this was pretty good. It was only 47 kilometres from... from uh, Port Smith, which was a pretty big day, really, 47 k's. So after we left Marble Bar, we went back to Port Hedland because we were expecting a package at the post office. And then we did 600 kilometres to Broome, which took us 10 days. It was a very relaxed trip. 
at those four beach sites that we've shown you. Uh, we are now in Broome and the videos are up to date. Um, we have some Wi-Fi here which we haven't had for several weeks so I managed to load a couple of videos up. So I will see you on the next one. Bye now.